All right, chicken fucker. Let's do this shit and go fuck some chi- I'm- Fuck, god damn it. Dad? What? <laughs> so your dad fuck chickens? Maybe. I can neither confirm nor deny. I mean, it runs in the family, right? That's true. Uh, being a Puerto Rican, all families fuck chickens. All Puerto Rican families? Yeah. Or just all families? Yeah. Oh, all, everyone's a Puerto Rican. <laughs> everyone's a Puerto Rican, yeah. I mean, based on people at this table, 100%, two out of two men in this household are Puerto Ricans. That's so, true. By that logic, all men are Puerto Ricans. Yes, because we are the best. We are all that matters. We are the best. Based on the title of our last podcast. <laughs> that was... That was... I really like that we couldn't figure out that it was KSI, and we kept saying Psy, and then it was... Yeah, well, when you said it, my brain was like, that sounds wrong, but I don't know. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep saying it. I, at some Psy's point later in the style. podcast, I listened to it, I said KSI, and I was like, that felt right, but it didn't sound right. When did you say KSI? It, it was like the last time we said something, I said KSI, and I was like, is that what it is? Is it Psy? I don't... What? And yeah, we just kind of we just kind of went with it. It's whatever. Yeah, everyone's it's, idiots, but us. Yeah, everyone's dumb. Hey, everyone. <laughs> What's up, guys? Notice how I said everyone was dumb, and then I said hello, everyone. Therefore, implying you're all fucking stupid. You're dumb, but you're not. You're all great. No, I'm we love sure. you guys. Yeah, especially you, Justin and Tyler. Yeah, Tyler, I know you got to this point in the video. Now you're gonna turn it off. Thanks, Tyler. Bye. Appreciate you. Well, welcome back to episode number eighteen. Maybe. Sure, that sounds I right. I don't know. It's. Uh, I think it's a legal age podcast. Ooh. Um, so good for us. Yeah, I know, right? Welcome back. Uh, we haven't recorded in in like two days or two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Not days. Yeah, it's been it's been a little bit. We recorded last with Justin, and we did that podcast with him, Dungeons and Dragons and Diets. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. But since then, I don't think we've recorded anything or even like looked at this table. I know I haven't. No, so. it's it's been a a busy couple of weeks. Had had the car thing happened to you it had just happened it had just happened it had okay just so happened. we talked about that yeah, yeah yeah so it was very fresh there has been a resolution which is exciting but we've also had a lot happen in the world since yeah i went to yoga twice i know you went to yoga two times twice yeah. and i would have gone today if i wasn't sore you're like the most flexible person i've ever met i'm basically a yogi <laughs> Dude, Bikram yoga sucks. What is what's the difference between that and like other yogas? So Bikram yoga is a specific yoga like routine. Yeah. And it's hot yoga, so it's supposed to be I think 110 Gross. degrees. Yeah. Right I'm off the bat. Out. Fuck that. I'm already out. <laughs> but the both times that I've gone to hot yoga, the heaters have been broken. So it's like 95. Still not great. Yeah. But not 110. That and, that 15 degrees is gonna make a hell of a difference though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because it's also a bunch of people sweat. And yeah, it's like in the air. Yeah, it's gonna be gross. And like the rooms tend to be small, so you end up laying by someone's feet. No. Yeah, that no. happened. Negative. Yeah, so I did that for an hour and a half. No part of me wants to do that. No, dude. The we should go to one of Claire's though. We're I, we'll have her on too. Yeah, but um, like, no, I'm super like down. The Yin, which would have been tonight, forty five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah, we can still go. Right, we can make it. We can make it. But that one's just all relaxation. So it's like calm, like nice music. Um, basic stretches, and then like I, I think they put sandbags on on joints and stuff, so you oh. get extra stretch in there. All right. Luke said he's done it before, but oh, he showed up to things. Yeah, what? He was at the other uh, other time I did yoga, and then didn't come here. Oh yeah, I remember that. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, thanks, Luke. Give he me the arcade Creed. cabinet. <laughs> You've been asking for that for two and a half years. Yeah, I would have had it that night if he had come up too. I thought about going to his place before to grab it. And just being like, I'm going to take this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But that was when my car was kept having the low pressure. Oh, the tire pressure. So Did was, you figure that out? Yeah, I got it patched on Thursday. It was a patch. Yeah, it was just a patch. I figured it was like it was. dead center. Oh, thank God. Which is, last time, it was right on the line, so I had to spend 150 yeah, on a new tire. To just get a new tire. Yeah, which was dumb. Stupid, yeah. But yeah, we've had um, we've had a lot happen in the world since yeah yoga we yeah no no but like other stuff happened too okay the the thing that i'm uh i want to lead with um which super duper going in the tags uh james gunn that whole thing kind of happened i feel like that happened like the day after we recorded maybe like that tuesday that monday tuesday area i feel like it was on it might have even been before because i know it was in the group chat with with justin and mike 
Yeah, I still, I still think it was. Maybe it was. I don't remember. But we haven't talked about it, and I no. want to talk about it because they've like everything I've read on the internet keeps going back and forth whether or not he's going to get rehired by Disney. People want him to to come and do stuff, and like I, uh, I just kind of wanted to discuss it and see your your opinion on it because me, I, I typically, as we've said on this podcast many times, I lean more liberal. I'm a more liberal leaning individual, and uh, you are very much. Uh, you pick what you like from every side and put it together, and you're like, this is what I like. Yeah. So I kind of want to get your uh, thoughts and feelings and opinions, and I want to express mine as well. And What's the current status? Current status is he's talking. Last I read uh, that is concrete is that he was discussing his buyout from his contract with Disney. Okay. Um, so him, Disney and him are sitting at a table. So uh, my in my brain, you know, wanting everything to be wonderful, there's also like, well, you guys don't have to buy me out. And they're like, we don't. And yeah. then they'll like be best friends and he can make Guardians 3. Yeah. I, I mean, I in general don't like it because it was so long ago. Yeah. And, and context matters too. I agree. Because I think the context was him trying to be funny. They're not good jokes. They're not, no. I don't laugh at them, but... The, I don't think he's actually condoning the the uh, pedophilia or yeah, whatever else pedophilia, he put in there. Pedophilia, rape, multiple. Yeah, it was like shitty shock humor. Yeah, and it was also 2012. Yeah, it was. Earlier? That was the late. That was the latest tweet. It was 2012. Yeah, there was ones from like 2007, 2008, 2009 area. Yeah, so it's like seven to ten years ago. And you're a totally different person at that point. Seven years ago, I was 20 years old. I could not legally drink. And now I'm like, oh, I'm so old. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, it, it takes forever to recover from anything. And even, how old is he now? Like, late 30s? Uh, I think so. Late 30s. He, like, old, at oldest, probably like 41. Yeah. Maybe. So that's still, seven years is still a long time. If yeah. you're someone who's like 77 and seven years ago you said something, you're kind of, you're most likely to a very similar person. You also have to think about the world we lived in seven years ago and just how different things like looking back on movies and stuff like Animal House and and uh, Revenge of the Nerds and stuff Dude, like that. 80s movies are terrible. Horrible. They're so bad. They're so bad. There's so many dudes that are just like, this girl's asleep. I'm going to make the sex with her. And yeah. everybody's like, Ooh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, no. You can't do that. That's right. Yeah. So it's it's just crazy to think that people like, and that was 20 years ago, 30 years ago now, I guess. But 40. 80s, 40 years ago now. Right? Yeah. I was just, yeah. I was or was it 30? Doing... Maybe just, I don't know. I don't know when those movies came out. It depends on wh when it came out. Yeah. Animal House was the early 80s, so it's definitely yeah. closer to 40. than. Okay. Either way, many years. It's a long time ago, but it's still, things change with time. And to hold him to that standard after the thing that I feel like isn't being talked about is like, you've already made two movies with him. Those tweets came out in 2012 at the latest. You, you already made two movies with him. Right. You've already cashed person. in. Yeah. yeah. You've already cashed in. What is the harm in doing another movie? I think it's not. The, the harm is now that there's public awareness. Oh, of well, it. yeah. So that's that's the harm. It's terrifying to think like. Something I said when I was 15, just being a stupid 15-year-old in New Jersey, mm -hmm. in my little bubble, could come back to haunt me. Dude, that's why I stopped years. using social media. That's why I barely used it when I was 15. Because I'm crazy. like, I don't trust this. Someone's going to use this, this against me. And it, that's just my own neuroticism it's finally being useful. Yeah. but it's, not, it's finally not a hindrance. Yeah. <laughs> it did something good for me. Yeah, it's just crazy that, that Disney was willing to... He was... The crazy thing is he did Guardians 1, Guardians 2. Mm -hmm. And I love Guardians. For those of you that don't know me personally and that you watch this, which is none of you, but still, um, I have a Star-Lord tattoo. That's what this tattoo is, is Star-Lord, because I had such an emotional connection to Guardians 2. Um, and he's just opened my eyes to different like music from the 70s and stuff like yeah. I like a lot. But... Um, I just can't I, – I, I just, it's just very difficult for me to wrap my head around them just being like, yeah, we know we already made two movies with you, and you've apologized for these things already, but you're fired. And they still – like like you were just watching the interview with Bobcat Goldthwait mm -hmm. on uh, Colbert. He mentions James Spader, 
or not James Spader, um, James Woods. Mm -hmm. And he's like, look at some of James Woods tweets. You're still using his voice for Hades and stuff. And you guys don't really want to talk about that. Yeah. And like Song of the South, which is the most racist movie ever created. Yeah, it's pretty bad. (laughs) It's even got a, a ride made after it. Yes, it's a, and it's in uh, the the big parks. It's mm-hmm. in the it's in California and Florida. It's it's not like it's like a little like oh we'll just brush it off. It's in, it's in. yeah. And granted, Splash Mountain isn't like Song of it just has the characters. Yes, but but it's still like uh, yeah. No, it, it's one hundred percent a business move. It doesn't surprise me in the in the slightest. It's just annoying. Yeah, like, I, I I disagree with it. I. But I, I think in their position, I might do the same because I've, at that point, you have to worry about more than just the director and the movie franchise. You're worried about the merger with Fox. You're worried about just Disney's um, brand reputation as this very wholesome thing, even though they've gotten <laughs> they've whitewashed uh, Song of the South and the Donald Duck being a Nazi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the yeah, because they they made war propaganda films. Yes, they like did. that was a big part yeah. of Disney. Walt was very animate uh, and and uh, involved with things like that. Adamant, adamant about doing stuff like that. He was, yeah, yeah. especially because like rumors say that he was kind of a anti semite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just say the word. I was like, I don't. Should I? Yeah, yeah. People were he, he allegedly hated Jewish people, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Um. Yeah, it's just kind of crazy. It, it's 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 insane that the world we live in now. Like, you can do something as meaningless. He can do something like that, but the president perjuring himself on on Twitter is like, oh no, it's fine. He, he's talking yeah. about launching nuclear missiles at North Korea, and everybody's like, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's a weird thing. It it it's one of those um, situations that shines lights on how rules don't really matter. Yeah, it's just. Who it's it's the power position you have, and then just like what the climate is at the time. It, Even watching, I've been watching Community again, yes, and seeing some of that stuff. It's two thousand nine when yeah, it started. Yeah, that was when it started. <laughs> like the entire entire character that is Chevy, even though he is like exemplifying a a person you don't want to be. Yeah, I don't think you could do that now. No, you couldn't get away with that now. Or when um, <clears throat> Senor Chang. Oh, yeah. when, when he's sitting in the classroom, it's just gay. Oh yeah, couldn't do that now. Oh my sure. god, fired immediately. Yeah. You'd be fired before you got out of the classroom. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god, it's just it's crazy. Like honestly, from 2000, this is the year I graduated high school. From then to now, the world has changed so much. Oh yeah, so much, and it, people grow, man. Like people change. You're not the same person now that you were five years ago three years ago, whatever. Mm-hmm. And and to hold something against someone like that, I feel like is completely uh it's it's ridiculous to be to be especially the way that they got found out was because he was openly say you know, criticizing Donald Trump and a, a right winged conservative blogger went in uh, like deep in his tweet history and was literally looking for stuff. Yeah, it's just another it's a it's a weaponization of social media. Because social media is a tool, and tools can be used as weapons, like guns. <laughs> <laughs> like guns. So now we're getting into a, a situation where, are we going to protect the First Amendment? Are we going to protect the, the Second? Because they're both tools that can be used for good or for bad. Or for, and we're yeah. seeing now how it can be used as a weapon. It's crazy how, how things like that are, are now being put in such a, a consistent light. You know, the the fights for the Second Amendment, the fights for the First Amendment, and what freedom of speech is. And that kind of goes hand in hand with, with one of the things we wanted to talk about next was with the Alex Jones stuff. He got straight up banned from... Yeah, Twitter's the only one who didn't do it, as far as I know. Yeah, and I mean, he can't really... You can't really stream to Twitter, can you? I think they have I think video. you can drop like a link, but Maybe. they have video, but it's he, he only has like a minute, his app. five minutes or something like that. Yeah, but what I heard from uh, Joe, he was talking, uh, apparently iTunes is trying to get him off the app store too. They're oh, you trying mean to get Joe Rogan? Yeah. The person you're on a first name basis with now? Yes. Well, we refer to him as Joe. Yeah. But yes, Mr. Rogan. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Rogan Sr. <laughs> no, he's got girls. There's no way he's got... Uh, have you asked them? 
No. Yeah, neither me neither. <laughs> I don't know them well. <laughs> but so he was saying that they're they're trying yeah, to take him him and uh, he he was two days ago. Him and, and uh, one of his guests. I didn't get his name, but they were talking about this this whole incident and. Uh, Apparently, they're trying to get his uh, app off of the app store. Was it Henry Rollins? No, it was not Henry Rollins. It was a different guy. He oh, was uh, dark uh, hair, glasses. Dull. Sure. Not dull. Whatever. I, I heard two I listened to Rollins uh, talk about Trump and how he gets played, and I was like, oh, my God. But mm-hmm. r- apparently, Henry Rollins isn't like any president ever. So for no, him he's to, black flag. Yeah. <laughs> for, him to, for him to talk shit, like, I was like, okay, you, you're allowed to talk shit. You don't like anybody. Yeah. So... <laughs> He's, good. he's an interesting dude, though. Yeah, I watched. He has a, a the this isn't happening. Mm-hmm. The Ari Shafir, or I think it's someone else now. But he has a, a stand up story in that, and it's super interesting to hear because it's about him doing um, acid. Oh, so okay, just something to check out, Pat and viewers at home. Yeah, check it out. But um, so what do you think about that? What do you think about the Alex Jones? It, I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand with the James Gunn thing, but to a different extreme because Alex Jones is an actual crazy person who might need to be medicated, where as James Gunn is just was going for that shock value and it, it landed poorly. But I mean, that was also the humor, I feel like, a couple of years ago. Like dead baby jokes were a huge thing when I was in high school. Yeah, but when we, we were in high school, two high schoolers, I don't know if adults found them funny at the time i don't know i really don't know that's kind of a genuine yeah i mean well we were children so (laughs) but with i i they're a little different to me because i understand or i can get behind disney's choice a little bit more because they have a brand to maintain and that's like again they're a private business they can do what they want yeah it's this it's kind of the same with the social media companies but they have an effective monopoly so it's not technically wrong because it's it's not legally wrong because because they're a private because they're they a private owned, company, yeah. but they kind of function as the new um, like town square, the new just communication. So yeah, it's there's like, not an alternative to to Facebook. Yeah, it's like the the kid standing in the square in like World War One movies where he's like yelling about what's happening overseas and he's got the paper and he's mm-hmm. saying extra extra read all about it. Yeah, so obviously th- that's why like I respect uh, Jack Dorsey's choice to. Jack Jack Dorsey's choice to not take him off. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand the other ones. I feel like it it will do more harm than good, like Streisand effect. It's definitely bringing more uh, eyes to him than it would have had it not happened. Yeah, I feel like well, I mean, even that day I told you the day that that everything got banned, mm-hmm. I went and watched his stream. Because I was going just for sheer, like, giggles. Because I thought he was just going to say the most absurd shit. And yeah. he did. But um, he's getting more more attention now than I think he's ever gotten before. Yeah. he's. I mean, he's he's a batshit crazy dude. Oh, he's insane. He, but he's entertaining. And I think it's... I think it's... Uh, it's bad to just say because someone has bad ideas means they're not entertaining. Yeah. And I think it's something that should be able to be separated. But then again, the like the the Sandy Hook shit. Oh man, that's where it gets when he's like that type of stuff. Yeah, is, no, and that's and, and, and okay. So did he actually dox families? Because I heard that was a claim, but I, I don't know if don't was... know. They talk about that in the Rogan clip that I watched. Mm-hmm. I don't know, um, but I I've I've watched the clip multiple times where he says that they're child actors. And yeah, that it was so. Even that in itself is enough for me to go. Okay, so you're a horrible person. Like you, you're just a terrible human being to, to comment that quickly, that soon after something and to belittle it into something that is like, oh, they're just, they're child actors. This isn't real. Yeah. What? Yeah. That it's, it's definitely, it's definitely crazy. Yeah. But I, I like, that isn't something that I personally say that he should be taken off air for. No. Because it's, it's stupid, but it's not Harm, I mean, it's harming the the like the parents. It's the victims, but yeah. they can turn it off. Yeah. When you get into the the land of doxing, then you're you're that's very close to inciting violence, if not inciting violence. Yeah. So if that's true, then I support the decision. He's the only reason I I could see it, just because of of how intense a human being he is. Mm-hmm. He is very very intense in in his beliefs. And he feels what he's doing is justified and what he's doing is for the betterment of the people. And I watched 
to, this is a really weird connection, but I watched the uh, the San Diego Comic Con panel for Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog. Mm-hmm. It's been ten years, and they did a oh, panel yeah. with Joss, Felicia Day, and Nathan Nathan Fillion. And one of the questions to Nathan was, uh, you know, how he portrayed Captain Hammer and like other roles that he's done. How does he do that? And um, he's he started talking about his only appearance as a bad guy as a villain was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer or an angel. It was one of those two, okay. but it was a Joss Whedon show. Mm-hmm. And he went to Joss and he's like, I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't know how to, he's like, I'm always the good guy. Like I'm charming and handsome and blah, blah, blah. And Joss was like, well, you are the good guy in your mind. You're the good guy. Mm-hmm. And that makes him, that makes Alex Jones dangerous because in his mind, he is the good guy in his mind. He is that the town crier that's trying to help and protect everyone mm-hmm. and show them the way. But he's yelling, a lot of insane shit and some of it may be true yeah but after it's the boy who cries wolf syndrome you know oh yeah yeah and that's the thing there no evil person thinks they're evil exactly so ah i don't know it's uh it's uh, uh, just <laughs> in you saying that he never played a bad person yeah in my mind i'm like captain hammer's the evil person in that yeah dr horrible is the one I like. he's the <laughs> he's the good one <laughs> <laughs> but it's it is a situation of there's no real black and white good and evil so i mean and, and i think there if i'm remembering correctly there are certain conspiracies that he's pointed out that were correct uh, according to, to mr rogan yes there are okay. like he's he's said multiple times that um you know there's stuff that he's right about and i believe that there's stuff there's inklings of truth in what he says yeah to to, to the the microscopic degree yeah but there's stuff that he says that is factual that people don't know about but he just blows it all so far out of proportion it's he hard down to that hole. yeah that. it's you know it, it's it's uh what is it something can't melt still beams jet fuel jet fuel yeah it that but like times a million <laughs> Yeah. And that's that is a microcosm of Alex Jones's show and just like he was talking about how it's and and it and it could be corporate blackballing. That could be very well what's happening to him right now, but he was like they're trying to silence us. They're trying to they're they're you know, they know that we're the mouthpiece and we're going to protect the American people and and all this other stuff and it's like no, they're they're shutting you up because you're spout, you're you're spouting more falsehoods than you are information actual useful information kind of i don't know i think i i would say he's right with the accusation wrong with the motivation yes i think the motivation ultimately again typically i'm a left-leaning individual but i can acknowledge that these corporations very liberal very left and what they're trying to do is is tamper down on the actual fake news and I think that he is a huge proponent of spreading fake news and falsehoods. Yeah. I think it's they're, they're trying to get, especially Facebook, with all the shit that's happening with them, they're, they're trying to, like, quiet all of the fake nonsense bullshit that floats around the internet, especially because they are a hub. I think Joe threw out, or the, the uh, guy on his podcast threw out that uh, 65... I think they said 45, but then it was also refuted. Yeah, it was it was a, 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 a half or more percentage of individuals get their news from Facebook. Yeah, regardless of what it is, it's a large it's portion. Horrifying. Horrifying. Well, yeah, because it's all bubble. Stuff. Yes. So that's where the, the algorithm they read really the headline. do us a, a disservice. Well, yeah, and they read the headline, and then it's like, I know what this is about. You don't know what yeah, but about. even if you read the article, it's coming from sources that confirm your bias yeah. it's the same same with with us and our social media no of course i i mean i assume you do the same but i go out of my way to watch stuff that i i generally don't think i'll agree with yeah just to get i, I don't go crazy with it it's it, primarily i watch defranco and then um just see what other offshoots i can find yeah so i do a lot of ruben stuff now yeah i'll, he's, I'll go to he's him gotten a little I don't know, he just seems kind of fake now. Yeah, I feel like he's going for shock value in views now more than before. I, I wouldn't say shock, but personally, I don't think shock value. I just think that he's, about a year ago was the transition point where it was like, oh, I believe this thing now, so now I don't have to think about it. I'm just going to say like, it. P- yeah, reiterate these plot points. Yeah. Because um, when he talks, it just it has that 
that air of, oh, these are the plot points that I talk about, and I agree with these now, so let's just let's L- let's suck keep each talking about dick. this. Yeah. So I still I still like him. I still think he's a like a pretty level headed guy. He's and, and he's very intelligent. Uh-huh. There's there's no denying there there's a, an extreme amount of intelligence there for him personally, but I. I I do think shock value just because I go back to his Rogan podcast and I was amazed at some of the things that he was saying and Joe kind of like pushed him on stuff and he didn't really have any uh, foundation. He didn't really have any basis in what he was believing to, to back it up. Like the, the workforce thing when Joe got on him about, he's like, well, no, you need these people to do these labor jobs. You need this, you need that. And Ruben was like, no, 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 this is what it's going to be. It's going to be perfect. And it's like, "Mm, that's not how things work. Yeah. That's a a pretty, pretty good, like uh, microcosm. Yeah. Of it. Especially like everyone who's in the, the intellectual dark web. I think he's the, the weakest. Which is, you know, like the slowest Olympic runner. Yeah, but. yeah, exactly. You're still in the you, Olympics. Because you have Joe Rogan, who's, he's not an intellectual, but he's smart and he's very, like, well, and he, his, he, thought, his ideas are thought flew through. You he, have, um, he goes out of his way to, to learn stuff yeah. about everything. So that, I think, gives him more credibility already than Ruben. Yeah, and just the, the way, the, the follow through that he has with it. Because everyone yeah. else is that way, too. Um, Jordan Peterson, very follows through on his thoughts um the weinstein brothers yeah who else is in it um i don't remember i'm trying to think of the picture in my head yeah and i can't i can't uh shapiro oh yeah that's right shapiro's in it too yeah. i like shapiro a me lot. too he's he's one of those people that even if i disagree with him i see his logic and it makes sense like, yeah oh, i understand why you think that i love that though i love when i can disagree with someone and go i disagree with you but because of my own beliefs and this is my thought process, but I respect what you're thinking mm-hmm. and you provided it in a way that I can understand. And if I believed in that, yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be like, Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I just don't agree with you. Have you watched his, uh, I think it's called Sunday morning specials. Mm-mm. He does. It, it's his podcast effectively. Yeah. Um, but not the news one. It's like he talks with, it's his interview show. So he had one with Rogan. He had one with Mike Rowe. He had one of the Weinstein brothers. Um, but it's interesting because it's another long form conversation where they just talk stuff out, and uh, it's it's really cool to see when there are people who he disagrees with, yeah, and they they get a chance to actually go into it, but they're they're still respectful, which is great. Yeah, it's, the, um, it's like Henry Rollins because he's batshit fucking on fire on the inside, but he says yes sir, no sir. Yeah, it's I I just I love that. I love when someone can, and that's what that's the. I think that's one of the problems that I have with a, a Donald Trump presidency is that he just doesn't – he's not tactful. Mm-hmm. There's no deft maneuvering in anything that he does, and that greatly upsets me because I feel like that makes us as a country look like we're being driven by a bus full of monkeys. Like it's – there's no control. There's no direction. I think who was um, – somebody on Colbert – said that it was like having a horse loose in a hospital. Yeah, I remember hearing that. And I really like that analogy because it's like, is the horse going to kill anyone? Probably not. But it could do some serious damage. And how did it get in here? And how did it get here? (laughs) Is he wearing shoes? (laughs) Yeah, I think it was, it was a John Mulaney. I feel like it was John Mulaney that That used that. That sounds like a, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a John Mulaney thing. So it's, he's on the elevator. (laughs) Yeah. I, it's just, I just, I wish that there was more people like that. I wish that there was more people like you and I have sat in the kitchen how many times and sat down and talked about political things and the way that we feel about things and, and differed on opinion, but still conversed with each other in a, in a very respectful and like talkative way. We weren't arguing or fighting. We were having a conversation, expressing opinions and thoughts and beliefs and whatnot. It's not that hard. Uh, no, it is really hard. Is it? I, yeah, M- most people aren't good because good at that because it's a, it becomes an emotional thing. You start playing for a team, and then it's my team's better than your team. I don't know why they're better, and then because I don't know why they're better, I'm going to get really frustrated and <laughs> yell at you because think- being loud is the next best thing to being right. <laughs> Is that like uh, cleanliness is next to holiness? Uh, maybe I don't know. I think it, it's either Dimitri Martin or. I think it's a Dimitri Martin joke. That sounds right. But yeah, I, I th- I, I'm curious 
to look back on this time after Trump's been out of office for two to four years. I'm excited because for I think that it, children. I, I well, no, I think that having this president who doesn't give a shit about politeness and cord- cordiality, whatever the word is, um, will have that that the the pendulum effect because we went from having someone like Obama who was very like proper and, and yeah to the complete opposite and then that's just what we do is we we pendulum back and forth and trying to be an optimist I think that this batshit crazy insane shit that's going on will have or could have a net positive where people are like oh yeah it's important to not be an asshole a giant racist person yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited for for that more than anything. I'm I'm excited to see where the country goes in the next five, ten years. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's what's going... We're just now seeing the benefits of what Obama did in his first term. Like what? Like, uh, just just with different financial things and, and... uh, you know, they say, and, and I don't know how, how to track this, and I don't know anybody that knows how to track this, but they say each president benefits from the president before if they did things right with the economy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things that Obama put into uh, happening in his first term are, were very economically driven and very, uh, you know, hiring uh, minorities and stuff like that. And, and those are now the numbers that are coming out. You know, the economy has never been better, you know, uh, unemployment in, you know, African American men is the lowest it's ever been and this and that and stuff. And Trump is getting the, uh, the, the accolades for this, but I think he's taking them. Well, I don't know, yes. I don't know if anyone's, actually I don't know. Giving yes. Them he's but, definitely taking them. But what things did he put into place? He's definitely, he did, um, He's done the stuff, uh, the, the student, I know he got the, the students passed that bill for, uh, to help, uh, if you're a registered student, you got X amount of dollars back on a tax return at minimum. Mm -hmm. Um, I know he's done things for, uh, he did stuff for middle-class families. Uh, not a lot by any stretch of the imagination, but he's done things, uh, that are now trying to be, uh, taken from. Taken back. Because they were executive orders. Yes. Yeah. See, I, I don't know. I don't. I genuinely don't know much about the presidency, like his presidency, because I didn't pay, I didn't pay too much attention. There was I, no paid, need. I paid like passive attention, but I just I also I was too young to really have a, a, a true understanding of what it was. Yeah. And um, I had a thing about, oh, I do kind of have an issue with the executive orders, the amount that he's done. And Trump's done a, an ungodly amount, too. Um, I think they need to be taken away. What? I think they need to be taken away. No. I, I th- well, you, you can't just take something away because one person abused it or because a few people abused it. Well, there's it, only it two people that have had the option to do it, from what I understand. I think Obama and – or maybe Bush had it as well. I think it's been a thing forever. Has it? I'm pretty sure that's – I thought executive order – that I, they've had increased powers. Yes. I think Obama increased the powers of them, and, and I think that was one of the things that I had read. I think that makes sense. But I would it's just a lot. It's been it's become an abuse. It's become an abusive thing. And it's like, I'm going to do this. And it's like, oh, OK, okay. there's no checks or balances on that. Yeah. Kind of what our, gov- our government was founded on. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping really just that having Trump as president exposes all the cracks in our system and lets us actually like fill them up a little bit yeah we like can citizens uh, united caulk caulk the cracks yeah i was gonna let you say that word caulk yeah penis it up <laughs> um when no I'm, I'm really curious to see what what happens and I'm, I'm excited to eventually down the road when i have children to be able to talk about this time because i really do feel like this is going to be a, a transformative time for us as a country because mm-hmm. we are still relatively young in the grand scheme of everything else. Super young. Super young. So this is this is very much, in my opinion, growing pains. Mm-hmm. And uh, like you said, there's there's for years I feel like we've built up this this uneven foundation, and it's kind of finally starting to give way, and we need to to just fix it. We need to to break it down back to the bare bones and fix it, and. It'll be interesting to see if that's what happens or if it's just an overcorrect and for the next four years, eight years, whatever it is, you know, we become extremely liberal as a country, which I don't want that either. Yeah. And extremely liberal in the American sense is like right wing. Yes. In the European sense. Yes. But 
um, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. How do you? I know we've talked about. I don't think we've talked about it on a podcast, but I think we've talked about it one on one before about uh, universal income. Oh, uh, in con- I like it in concept. Kind, I don't know. I I'm very torn in my like the hippie side and my libertarian <laughs> side. Like, just fucking do it yourself, and then be like everyone needs help. So <laughs> I don't know. I think if it gets to a point where automation really is um, as pervasive as people are claiming it will be then we're going to need it yeah my, my biggest marker for that and I, i'm not an economist i'm a web developer yeah so looking at the the transportation industry oh yeah that's it's like the largest employer for like 35 of the 50 states and it's one of the easier ones to get rid of Google's especially, already working on it. Yeah, especially things like uh, long road truckers, long haul, big haul, whatever. Yeah. Giant trucks. Big trucks. Big trucks. Um, big truck drivers. <laughs> yeah. Like, eventually, if that can be fully automated, we won't need people. And if we do need... And it'll be safer. It'll be safer, but e- or even if it's mostly automated and we still have a person in there, they won't... I don't know. It could either be they don't... It's like a minimum wage job and they just kind of maintain, or yeah. it's more like a specialist job. Either way, that cuts out the middle the the what middle i guess that'd be middle class yeah but the the middle education non area. non-college degree or even now it's looking more and more like four-year degrees are just kind of like everybody has one of that's those. gonna be a huge issue yeah like the i don't even have one well the the amount like the amount of student debt that the country has obscene is stupid it's obscene and then the over emphasis on on like the intellectual or white collar jobs. Yeah. When you can, you can make a shitload of money being a good electrician or a good plumber. Those are things that are not going to go away. No, never. And it's just, we, it's been the butt of a joke to, to go to a trade school. That's the whole, that's the whole thing with, um, going back to community with Troy going to AC uh, repair. Yeah. AC repair. School. Yeah. It's a damn good job. Yeah. The world's getting hotter. We're going to need AC. Yeah. I mean, so, we got we got a nest. We so. did. We got a nest, and it's nice. <laughs> it is really nice. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's making a huge difference. Oh yeah, and it's gonna start learning. I can't wait. I know. But um, but, th- but my point is, putting emphasis on trade stuff, I think, is important. Yeah. Even what I do is really more of a trade than an intellectual thing. Yeah, I think it'll definitely shift more into that as we get further along with technology and stuff, and as the the old guard kind of dies out. I feel like is one of the big things that like. Um, so in my field in doing film and stuff, um, the Academy hated, uh, Final Cut and Final Cut Pro. They mm-hmm. hated it. They were like, this is awful. It's the worst thing. And up until Final Cut 8, I want to say, I think 8, and that was becoming the, the norm in, in editing for film movies and, and everything. Yeah. But after 8, they brought it to make it look like iMovie. And everybody stopped using it. But uh, 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 Premiere was was slowly fa- getting phased out, and now it's back to being the staple. But it was only a staple because that's what the old guard had edited with their whole time. But people in the up and coming were editing with Final Cut, mm-hmm. so Final Cut was making more of a, more noise about it. And again, then Apple shit the bed and made it more like iMovie and whatever. I don't think they shit the bed. I think it was a smart choice because it was a smart so choice. People who are small creators, yeah. who want something more professional than iMovie, but don't need something complicated. Just the the mass, the pervasiveness of of what we're doing right here. Final Cut's all we need. Most YouTubers, Final Cut's all you need. Yeah, but I think it limits their their. I guess you're going to get more money from the, the casual consumer over. But I have iMovie. I don't, if, I'm not going to pay extra money to get Final Cut when iMovie comes on my laptop. Yeah, but if, l- let's say, a year and a half down the road, this is making money. Yeah. Fuck yeah, getting Final Cut. It's something that it's better. Yeah. It, like Because I used it for about a month. I had a, a, a trial for it. Yeah. The things that you don't realize that you want are in there. And it does it automatically. So it, it is definitely uh, better. And it, it's um, nice. the code is more efficient, too. I'm sure. So the things just run. It just runs smoother. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think this type, what we're doing is not a, it used to be a thing that took up your entire mental bandwidth. Yeah. And now it's like 20%. So the, all the stuff, all the the generic bullshit gets made easy because really you have to be doing something else and filming. Everything needs to be a media company. Yes. That's, that's just how it is now. 
Yeah, you're not wrong. You're so right. Thanks. Orange That's why I, I like what we're what we're doing because we we have other stuff we're doing. So this is a good way to passively build up these skills that we have. Yeah. And then down the road, if we decide, oh, we're gonna do t-shirts, now we we already have the marketing type of stuff down. That's yeah. why if how's the um the role the real guy the real yeah I mean all I need to do is do set things. I'm making a real guys. Um, yeah. I just need to do set things, take pictures of sets or a video of set stuff, do some pans. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do it in my head yet because I want it to look good, mm-hmm. but I don't. I like I, I don't really have any ideas yeah. for it. So, um, but other than that, I mean, it's it's just about. I have 40 seconds of my reel done, um, and it takes up multiple clips of different things I did while I was at full sale, and. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably get a couple seconds of this stuff and some D and D things, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 going good, and I, I hope that that works out. I hope I can get do you know some freelance work and potentially something that's stable and consistent. Yeah, but um, yeah, I feel like we're in more of a trade. Ten years down the road, it'll be more of a trade, and I think it was a trade. What we like web design, editing, film video stuff like that oh is, yeah is, yeah they're all is trades. heavily trade but it's not looked at that way um my my ex uh the one that that ended poorly in that that night downtown um trying not to drop names yeah uh her dad who is one of the nicest hardest working men i've ever met in my entire life got laid off from uh a job working for uh the golf Channel? Channel, yes. Uh, because they made cuts. Mm-hmm. And the people that they kept on had four-year degrees. They didn't have as much experience as him, but they had four-year degrees. So I feel like it's going to shift in that direction for a little bit or has shifted in that direction. But it'll, it'll eventually swing back around to, what have you done? What ca- what can you show me? And Yeah. Because, I mean, he had 13 years or something working with the Golf Channel. And they were just like... Sorry. Yeah, it sucked. It does suck. It sucked. But it's just it's that, that it, it's crazy that like I said, it's in in the time that we've spent in from high school to now, the world has changed so much. Mm-hmm. You know, in high school they were pushing everyone to go to college and they were like, "Yeah, you know, you have to go to school and, you know, focus on this and da 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 da." da. But there were still kids that were like, "I'm going to be a firefighter. I want to be a cop. I want to be a this." And it was like, "Cool. Yeah, good for you." And then there was like now it's like everyone needs to go to school always. Yeah, my my sister yeah. just graduated, and they were like, "You need to go to college." Yeah, because we we had um it was Marchman was the trade school. And I knew a couple people who went there for like um elect to be an electrician. What's the yeah? What's that called? Mm-hmm. Electrology, electrology. Sure, that sounds right. Yeah, so electrology. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's definitely pumped up more that that's why i don't like the i don't know part of me likes the the college like free college for everyone yeah but i don't like it just de-emphasizes college but college is really you're paying for networking you're not paying for an education yeah you're paying for who you know yeah some of it you're paying for education if it's like engineering architecture computer science like more advanced than what i do yeah that you you kind of need more of a degree <laughs> but when you're doing like web design or english it's like you just you're meeting people yeah business is the well big and that's one. what i said about about full sale and the fact that i didn't i didn't get my degree but what i've always said is that instead of putting myself in debt and going to school i wish that i just would have bought a camera mm-hmm. a, a really nice camera some sound equipment and just did it myself yeah, because I feel like I could have gotten just as far, if not farther, than I've gotten currently with a year and a half of full sale under my belt than I could have with you know multiple years of recording and editing my own stuff, having my own recording studio, basically. Yeah, I think the one benefit of stuff like full sale is is the um, the forced focus. Yeah, like it forces you to to do that and follow through with it because it's super easy to just say you're gonna do it do it for two weeks and then be like, I'll do it next week. (laughs) Like us going to the gym. Yes. Granted you had a car accident. Yes. And I didn't (laughs) want (laughs) to, but I ran. Yeah. I I mean, I I still count that as the other day. I I count that as exercise. And I've been, I've been going back to the gym since I, 
since I've gotten my back straightened out and stuff from the accident, I've been going. I went last night. I didn't want to. I told you that. I was like, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. And I got up and I went and I listened to some critical role on my headphones and I was running and I did some upper body stuff and I was like, cool, I did it. And then I came home and I was asleep. Yeah. (laughs) So it's, I don't know. It's, I, I get it for some people and I do, I like free college for everyone, but I want to it, it, like let people know it's okay to not go to college. Like my dad's a mechanic. Mm-hmm. That is a necessity at this juncture. We need mechanics. Yeah, cars are vital. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the, there's gonna need to be someone or something at some point if everything becomes auto, uh, you know automated to fix it. Because it's, it's always gonna be a thing. Yeah. So I support that. But, but so. What I'm hearing is it's not that you support free college, you support free further education. Yes. Because if you give free college, then that just de-incentivizes trade schools again. Yeah. No. I would honestly rather see free trade schools. I don't know how that works. I just think that incentivizing that stuff is more important than incentivizing college. Yeah, college isn't forever. And, and I liked my time at Full Sail. That is one of the things I want to yeah. get across is I loved being at Full Sail. I loved UCF. But it's... It because it was hyper focused, you know that the stuff in school that I hated, and I was ta- I talked to multiple teachers because they come. I work at bars and they come to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was talking to a teacher the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, my most of my teachers loved me because I was extremely intelligent, but I did not apply myself. If mm-hmm. it was not English, history, or TV and media, I did not apply myself to anything." Yeah, and. Like math, science, and, and it, like, nope, didn't care. I was like, get out of my face. I don't give a shit. Yeah. If I couldn't be creative, I didn't care. Right. And history. I love history just because people dying and stuff. Yeah, fuck people. Uh, right. People are the worst. But like, I love, I love ancient history. I love Egyptian. I love Roman. I love Aztec, Mayan, Inca. Like, I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Any, anything. Like, I don't care about. I am the worst with American history. American yeah. history dates, I cannot maintain anything. Like, people are like, Oh, what year did World War One start? And I'm like, oh, it started. There's a 19. <laughs> it was definitely 19 something. And I like that maybe makes me a bad person, but I don't like it's just not something that's ever stuck with me. Yeah, there's a it falls into a weird valley for me, too. It's it's too relatable, but not relatable enough. Yeah. Like I'm really interested in 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 like 60s, 70s on. Yeah. Because I can relate to it pretty well. And then I like whatever I don't give a shit until like twelve hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where it's like, oh, this is like universal. <laughs> Salem witch trials. What? Like I, I love that, that shit. Like, wasn't that like fifteen hundred? Yeah, it was like fifteen hundreds. But like I just I like that stuff. Like mm-hmm. I like the the weird aberrations in history. I'm like, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Like I like learning about Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan and like conquerors, like people that were like, I'm gonna take over the world, and they were like, what? The world's this big, and then it wasn't that, it big. Wasn't that big. They were wrong. <laughs> you were super wrong. And I just I like looking at history through different lenses because, like. The the phrase the victor uh, to the victor go the spoils is absolutely correct, and the victors write history. Mm-hmm. Like you look at stuff like uh, the what was it uh, FDR and the uh, the not concentration camps that we put Asian people in during World War Two. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was like no, those totally aren't. Nobody talks about that, but that was absolutely a thing that happened. Yeah, it was like I think the yeah. only saving grace is that we didn't. Kill, kill them? them? No, we just left them in squalor and disease. It yeah, was, was which isn't much better no but i think that's the only way you can kind of get by no weren't mass executing them in showers and ovens and yeah no absolutely it was it was not a holocaust level situation but it was an extreme overreaction that does not oft get talked about yeah and you know what's crazy is when i I don't know about you but that type of stuff I'm, i'm always one or two steps removed where i think oh that was a terrible thing that happened Okay, that's a bad thing that happened. <laughs> but then really sitting down and thinking about it and thinking that, like, two people ago, maybe, what, three people ago, maybe, because it was the, the Oh, 40s, yeah. Th- three people ago, that was just happening, like, everywhere. They're just like, oh, you're Asian? Come with me. <laughs> Let's go hang out over here. <laughs> and now it's like, Asian culture? I love that. <laughs> uh, no, now they're not letting Asians into Yale for equal... Was it oh, Harvard? that's Whatever. right. Ivy yeah, one of, the, I, one of the old school Ivy Leagues, because they're... They, 
they want more people or something. I don't. It's more. It's, it's the shitty part of. Um, it's the extra shitty part of uh, equality of outcome. Yes. Because you have the people who are doing really well, so you push them down. That's I. That's where I have an issue. Because I'm okay with helping people who need help, but fuck you if you're going to make it harder for people who are just good at shit. Yeah. To succeed. I don't in in situations like that where it doesn't hurt someone. Why do there need to be two? Why does there need to be a loser? Why can't two people win with, with something like that? Like why can't you help someone that's really good at this thing and someone that just needs help? Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's it's I get that. So just using the the situation of college admissions, yeah. I get that it's a zero sum game. They're only going to let X amount of people into the school, and that's I'm a little more okay with with pushing up people like uh people who have been historically um neglected yes let's say that but then when you push other people down it's just it's artificial and you're just slowing progress if there is a legitimate if there's legitimate reason for them to be there if they interviewed better then i get it like that even if it's to that point because if you could have you know better test scores than me but if i interview better than you and i can maintain a conversation better than you and we're going to do roughly the same i'm not saying like i had a 1.6 and you had a 4.0 like let me in because i can talk better than you right but if it's like a if it's like a 4.0 and a 375 and the person just interviews better t- then take them i get it right like, but that's, that's not that's not what's happening. no that's not what's happening no. that's what i'm saying that would be okay with i'd be okay with that well and no and that even that would be okay if it was not based on race the problem is that you're saying oh this this group of people tends to do better so your minimum for us to even look at you is i don't know 100 points higher i don't know what it actually is it's ridiculous yeah it's just it's overcorrection for for shit it's it's that pen it's the the same pendulum pendulum. life is always in a pendulum so it's I, i i'm always wary about bitching about it too much because i'm like this is just the cycle of how things go. Yeah. But if you don't talk about it, then it, it doesn't, there's like, nothing that is the process to bring it back. Yeah. I like that. I like that. We talk about stuff like this and that we're both, we do sit separate on, on a fair amount of things, mm-hmm. but I like that. We're both, like I said, intelligent enough to, to be able to talk about it openly and without like being like, you're fucking dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I like how when you, when you do that, you're like, man, I'm from the South now. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's just your Jersey boy. stereotypes is, is how I grew up. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. Um, that's not to say all people from the South are dumb. But all dumb people are from the South. <laughs> but everyone that's South is stupid. <laughs> as, as two people who live in the South. <laughs> yes, but we don't want to. No. <laughs> no. no. Oh, I, had, I had a thing. What were we talking about? We're in the north of the south, though. This is where northerners go to die. So. Yeah, everything below, like, Tallahassee is it's, basically that. Yeah. I mean, according to, I was talking to Mal, uh, I was at Mal and Mike's new apartment, and sh- they did not, her school did not get off for President's Day, but the Friday before President's Day they had off because that was Rodeo Day. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Rodeo Day, they had Rodeo Day off because so many of the kids were involved and their parents were involved in the rodeo Mm -hmm. that they would all miss enough school that the day wouldn't count anyway. Yeah. So they just gave the day off. I I was like that for uh, like surfing towns too. that. uh, That's probably, but it's just like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I can't wrap my head around that concept because if like, if you came into my high school in New Jersey and you were like, yeah, we're going to have off for rodeo day. I'd be like, who the fuck are you? Why are you here? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't make sense there. No. You'd have to get off for like. We have Cowtown. Easy. Oh, I was I was going to say you get off for like getting a tan day or. No. What are, what are some <laughs> other Jersey stereotypes? Coffee. Uh, saying coffee co- like co- that. Coffee. I know nothing about Jersey. It's, it's coffee day. Coffee. Coffee. Uh, chocolate. The mall. Uh, Got to go get the dog. Uh Oh. Yeah, that's my aunt talks just like that. Does she? Yeah, it's real bad. She sounds like uh, Marissa Tomei from my cousin Vinny. I was about to ask. If oh yeah, it's, it's okay that if bad. Marissa Tomei does it. They look exactly this. There's like a look that she gives Vinny in that movie that my aunt Jen has made at, in my direction every t- like when I see her and I laugh is every it, time. Is it that look of like? It's when she's on the stand. She's like, Yeah, I know that look. And it, I was like, I I laugh every fucking time because it's like that's my aunt that's my aunt jen 
and she had like it's just it's fucking hilarious yeah but yeah it's uh it's crazy the the divide in in the country right now and uh, do you think midterms are gonna go conservative or liberal this is going on the internet so you can't take it back well i don't make a rape joke wait what (laughs) what i don't know i can't i'm not even gonna claim to to have any real finger on the pulse of people because I, I know I, I'm in a bubble, too. Yeah. I'm in my own bubble. Like, most of the people that I talk to in real life lean left. So if I listen to those people, yeah, it's going to go blue. But then a lot of the, um, like, YouTube content that I, I take in has a bit more. And it's not even conservative. It's just not... As, not overwhelmingly left. Yeah. I mean, people like Joe Rogan. Yes. I'll, I'll watch um, I watch Shapiro. Um, I, I can't find any any like left leaning people that I, I really connect with. No, because then they just come across whiny. Yeah, I've I noticed mean, that like people that are super left are just super fucking whiny. Yeah, and there's like Joe's pretty left. He's just very responsible, like discipline driven. He's very left in in some things, but I notice in other things like like guns and stuff. He's very right. He's, he, he's classic liberal yes he's, he's like oh he is a like, classic liberal yeah but that is now considered i think that that i mean i guess that's more central now than it is left or right but classic liberal is like i would consider myself a classic liberal yeah. i want guns yes everyone should have the ability and option to get guns if you are of sane mind and body mm-hmm. you should be able to get a gun but there should be checks in place for that yeah. because crazy people shouldn't have guns yeah or just the checks that we have should be better better done yes there should be more money wasn't there a place i think it was florida where there was like i don't know a week or so that just checks didn't happen yeah because something like that forgot their login yeah they were like oh no i don't know my login so you're good gun yeah here you go (laughs) like stuff like that is an issue yeah terrifying terrifying i'm curious to see the midterms i think are going to be a very big deal um i i think People need to go vote. Like, I know I have friends that have are like, yeah, I've never voted before. And I'm like, what the fuck mm-hmm. is wrong with you? If, if like, in nothing else, I've only voted in presidential elections. I'm yeah. not one to be like, go vote for mayor. Like, I've never done that. Like, I can't I can't sit on that, that high horse. But vote in the presidential election. Like, you get, you get the opportunity, do it. Yeah. Even, I mean, it, it's harder to find the information, but I would argue that it's more important to... To vote in midterms. midterms, I agree wholeheartedly. I think it is, and I, I absolutely intend on voting in this in this midterm election, for sure. Yeah, because could, I think it's going to have a big effect on on where the country goes. Could you ever see yourself running for a, like a local level office? Um, maybe. There's a lot of. I'm not good at being bureaucratic. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at at coddling things and brushing things over. I'm very blunt. And in seeing Trump be president, I realized that that can work to an ex- to to a, a certain point. But I feel like it almost needs to be an extreme in order for it to work. And if not, it's just off putting. Yeah, it's it's uh it's entertaining and it's fun. Yes, but it alienates a lot of people. Exactly. So a lot of people don't like uh just that that brashness that I, I possess sometimes and, and we've talked about it I've gotten better much better since living with you um in my my brashness and my forwardness because I've watched how you dictate things and how you handle things and I've definitely picked up on stuff like that and little cues but um maybe I, I think it would have to be something that someone approached me and was like I think you'd be really good for this. And mm-hmm. if I sat down and thought about it and and thought I could actually make a change and a positive effect, then I would do it. Yeah, like Jeff Winger. Yeah, exactly. That's like Jeff trust Winger. Upon you. Yeah. <laughs> either either give it to me or don't. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm so cool. Back on my phone. <laughs> I think it's I'm in a similar position, except I would be a little more active in pursuing it if I already felt that I could do something. Yeah, I just don't know what I could do. Yeah, I'm, and that's I'm. It's not something I'm like actively going towards. Yeah. I just think I'm in general. I'm pretty good at at running stuff, or I'm I'm better than let's just say the average person. Yeah, I would agree with that. So statement. I think trying. I think I would be good in a position like that, but I don't want to get into a position where I am then 
I don't I don't want like the state level. I don't want to have to like ask for a bunch of money. I just want, oh, this is a town that I've lived in for 10 years and oh, we're all friends and oh, I'm good at that. Yeah, I can do that. Let me help yeah. you out. That kind of thing. It's a very much a tribe mentality like, you know, you're you're the best at this thing, so help us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I support that. And that would be something like if you were to do something like that and you were like, "Hey, I need help with this thing." I'd be like, "Oh, cool. Let's do that." And would help you just because that's who I am as a person. Thanks. So, it's just I feel like we mesh in that if if you and I were to combine each into each other, I think we would be the perfect candidate for anything. <laughs> Are you asking be... to have kids with me? <laughs> I think so. Um, let's talk. Dibs on the dad. Fuck. <laughs> Fine. I will be so goddamn nurturing. You're going to wish you were the mom. Mom? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I think with with how we both are, um, between my non-existent fear of public speaking mm-hmm. and your ability to dictate and, and converse uh, intelligently and, and not be as crude or brash as me mm-hmm. i think is, is a positive uh i think if we like melded that together and we became a super person we'd be the greatest candidate for anything ever so we just got because everyone else is stupid we need that fusion dance yes we do oh my god we should get at a time though, should get it? the earrings the porta earrings yeah those are two different things yeah but i want them okay just making cool. sure you know yeah that that's two different fusions yes i know okay but i still want it what would, would be we don't have it'd be jat or posh posh sexier it's a spice because <laughs> then we could tag everything posh <laughs> speaking of spices we are low on a lot of spices we are low on a lot we of need, spices like, cumin and shit oh i'm gonna start making rice and beans again because mm. i need to cultivate mass i me too yeah you skinny bitch <laughs> i wish but yeah i feel like it's a good place to uh to call it i feel like this it? was very i feel like it was very successful yeah i don't really have anything else that I can think of off the top of my head. I feel like we'd just be talking in circles. Yeah. No, I think this is a good wrap up point. Um, so I guess we'll close out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Yeah, guys. Appreciate it so um, much. Thank you. We haven't got kicked off like Alex Jones. So you can like, Yet. subscribe, comment, do whatever. Babies are devils. Yeah, baby, babies are devils. <laughs> and there's the name of the podcast. <laughs> babies. Babies are devils. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. See ya. Love you. Kisses. But only if you want me to. Yes. Consensual. Love you. (laughs) 